knowing, um, knowing what's possible. Yeah, well, um, um, it, I, I do feel responsible for always keeping the information based in science and as pure as possible. I feel it's really important to do the research that we're doing. I mean, we've, we've studied so much uh, from a scientific standpoint, the process of change and the process of transformation and what meditation actually can do for a person in terms of their biology and, and some of the changes that we're seeing just in seven days. Um, my responsibility really is to give people my greatest understanding of the truth and numerous opportunities to experience it, nothing more. You know, there is a way to inspire people into possibility. And so they, we combine different models of science, whether it's quantum physics or neuroscience or neuroendocrinology or psychoneuroimmunology, the mind-body connection, epigenetics, electromagnetism. All of these sciences allow people to understand themselves better. And if knowledge is power, if knowledge about yourself is self-empowerment, you can empower people to do something with it. So the more you understand what you're doing in the process of change, the more you understand why you're doing it. As I said, the how gets easier. So we now know that if you give people sound scientific information, and that is the contemporary language of mysticism, and they can learn that information, they're basically making new circuits in their brain. That's what learning is. Learning is forging new synaptic connections. But if you don't review what you learn, if you don't repeat it, it's so much easier to forget it than to remember it. So you got to repeat it over and over again. So we allow people in our workshops to then begin to turn uh, and teach it back to somebody. They have to really explain it. If they can't explain it, it's not wired in their brain. And they're going to, something's going to be left to conjecture, to superstition, to dogma, to spirituality. And, and that's, not, that's not the result we want. We want them to use science as that model. And if they can explain that model, and remind themselves what they've learned, reproduce the same level of mind, nerve cells that fire together, wire together. So they begin to install the neurological hardware in their brain. By teaching others. Yeah, exactly. So that they are prepared for an experience. So then if that information is installed in their brain, that philosophy, that theory, uh, that knowledge and information, and now they can remember it and they have that model of understanding and they understand what they're doing and why they're doing it, if we can set up the conditions in the environment and give them the proper instruction, if they can get their behaviors to match their intentions, if they can get their actions equal to their thoughts, if they can get their mind and body working together, they're going to have a new experience. Now, experience enriches circuitry in the brain. That's what experience does. The moment those neurons begin to string into place, though, another part of the brain makes a chemical, and that chemical is called a feeling or an emotion. And the moment you feel unlimited, the moment you feel grateful, the mo moment you feel empowered, the moment you feel whole, now you're teaching your body chemically to understand what your mind has intellectually understood. The information is just not in the brain now. The information now is literally in the body. And now you're embodying the truth of that knowledge, of that philosophy, of that theory. So then you're teaching your body and, and instructing your body chemically to understand what your mind has intellectually understood. Okay, so then that information that's coming as a new experience is changing your biology in some way, and we've actually shown this. So then if you've done it once, then it means you should be able to do it again. And the idea is to be able to repeat an experience. And if you can repeat it over and over again, both neurologically and chemically, Neurochemically, you can condition your mind and body to begin to work as one. And when you can do it so many times that your body now knows how to do it better than your conscious mind, it's innate in you. So I want to map out this process so that I make sure I understand it. Starts with the neurology, which I, I, I heard is a, a thought which you then ingrain in your mind by teaching it to someone else. Is that accurate? Well, first thing you have to do is you got to give people information. Yeah. Information. And science is probably the closest to the truth in terms of information. And so when your brain is exposed to information and you're present and you're paying attention, that neurons begin to connect. That's what learning is. Learning is forging new synaptic connections. The Nobel Prize research, Kandel, in the year 2000, his re the researcher said that if you learned one bit of information and you paid attention to that information for about an hour, 
he would double the number of connections in your brain as a result of your interaction with that information. But if you don't review it, if you don't repeat it, if you don't have to think about it, the circuits prune apart, right? So if learning is making new synaptic connections, then remembering is maintaining and sustaining them. So it's so much easier to forget this information than to remember it. So you learn it. Once I got a person's head nodding, then they turn to the person next to them and say, let me try this out. Let me try this out and let me see if I can repeat it. And so between the two of them, they exchange that information and they start to build a model of understanding. Ah, I understand. I got that. Okay. Then we advance the information a little bit more and they, they're adding new stitches into the three-dimensional tapestry of their gray matter. And they have to remind themselves what they've learned, reproduce that same level of mind. Mind is the brain in action. As you install those neurological circuits in your brain then, now you're prepared. It's the forerunner to the experience. You're prepared for the experience. So give the proper instruction, get your body involved, get involved in the process. The experience then causes circuits to become more enriched. That's what experience does. And then it makes a chemical, and that chemical is called a feeling or an emotion. And the stronger the emotion you feel from the experience, the more you remember it. And what is that experience? What Abundance, health, wholeness, a mystical experience, success, a new relationship, a new career, um, a new life. Whatever the person's, whatever, whatever that vision that person wants to arrive at in the future and to actually go from the thought of that vision to the actual experience of it. And the distance between that thought and that experience is called time. So if we can teach people to shorten the distance between the thought of what they want and the experience of having it, um, then they start believing more that they're the creator of their life. What would you say to somebody that doesn't think thoughts matter that much? I would say 90 five percent of the world plus or maybe more 99 percent of the world plus sees thoughts as something that we are you know it's my head talking it's me talking in my head and as long as i don't act on those thoughts they're inconsequential i would i would say then that's the truth is it the truth I, i don't know but for me my thoughts do matter i think every thought that you have makes a chemical and you can have thoughts that make you feel good and thoughts that make you feel bad and, and I think that if 90% of the thoughts that we think are the same thoughts as the day before, the same thoughts lead to the same choices. The same choices lead to the same behaviors. The same behaviors will create the same experiences. And the same experiences produce uh, the very same emotions. And those same emotions influence a person's very same thoughts and their biology, their neurocircuitry, their neurochemistry, their hormones and even their gene expression stays the same because they're staying the same. There's nothing wrong with that. But I do think that if you think differently and you learn new information and you have new thoughts, if you can make new choices and demonstrate new behaviors and create new experiences and arrive at new goals and feel new emotions, I would say that's evolution. And I think that people really, really secretly believe in themselves on some level. And and I think being defined by a vision of the future or really always, always dreaming of of another great experience, I think is a great reason to wake up.